Hey guys, my name is Kian Hushman and today we're going to be checking out how to dial in a perfect guitar tone every single time. Let's have a look. Just want to say before we start, if you guys like the video at any time, feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. And if you want to see more of this stuff, definitely subscribe because I will be doing more videos like this in the future. I do have an Instagram at Keanu Schman Live. I'll leave it somewhere on the bottom of the screen. If you guys want to see more like behind the scenes stuff, definitely follow that because I'm much more frequently posting on that than I am on the YouTube channel. Everything I talk about in this video can be applied either with amp sims or real amps. Um, I'm going to be using amp sims. I'm going to be using the Archetype Plainy from Neural DSP purely for the fact that they just extended the trial period for all of their plugins by 14 days and I really liked the Pliny when I tried it first so I'm trying it out again and it's something I'm unfamiliar with so I can just get like an unbiased thing when I'm dialing in the tones from scratch. So you probably clicked on this video expecting me to show you how to dial in all the settings on your favorite amp sims and stuff like that but really before you even do that you should really be checking the state of your guitar and the condition that it's in and how you get the best signal from the guitar into your computer first. The key to dialing in a guitar tone isn't really much so what you're doing on the computer and how you're dialing everything in, it's how you're recording it, how you're playing it and how it sounds from your guitar into the computer. And that's why it's absolutely pivotal that you do all of these things before you even hit record because once you hit that record button you can't change the signal that you put into the computer. So obviously number one thing is when you're dialing in a tone, fresh strings. I use the Daddario NYXL 11 to 56s in drop C, and I'm doing that on my Mishiman Sewer Jackson USA model. Obviously, this ties in with the setup of your guitar, so make sure you take your guitar into a qualified guitar tech who will adjust the action, the string height, the intonation, all the stuff like that to make sure that the strings aren't buzzing or anything like that when you're recording. One underlooked thing that most people forget about when they're dialing in a tone is the actual gear that they're using to dial it in. There are certain characteristics and certain features on a guitar that won't be on all guitars and you have to put that into effect when you're dialing in the tone. For example, I know that this guitar has a thick slab of maple on the top which will ultimately affect the high end. Um, it's ebony fretboard so everything's going to be spanky, bolt on neck. It's going to be pretty high end, pretty spanky. But to accommodate with that, the juggernauts have this low mid presence which will kind of even it out. So it's a very neutral sounding guitar, maybe with a little bit more low mids pushed up. But say for instance you had a mahogany guitar with a mahogany set through neck and darker pickups. Ultimately, you might think that when you're dialing in compared to other recordings that your guitar sounds a little bit dark, which is true. So you should be dialing in the highs and the presence accordingly on the amp sim. So now that we've got fresh strings on and we're understanding the gear that we're using, it's time to actually get the signal from the guitar into the computer. So obviously the first thing is going to be the cable that you're using. Make sure it's a good quality cable or at least the cable that you know is going to work. Not something where if you touch it in a certain way it will start fuzzing out on your amp sim and stuff like that. And then from here you'd want to connect it into an interface or a DI box and then an interface. Personally I have it connected to a DI box and then I have it connected to an interface and the reason for this is that the interface that I'm using which is the Steinberg UR22 Mark II um, doesn't have enough headrooms on the preamp so even when the gain is turned all the way off and I play it still clips. So I had to buy a DI box, fed my guitar into that DI box, it brought the signal down and then I put that signal into my interface into the computer. If you don't have a DI box, just make sure that the output of your guitar isn't clipping when you're going into your interface and make sure you use the high Z input on your interface if it has one. Um, I'm pretty sure any interface over like 60, 70 bucks has a high Z input, which is most of them. So when you use the high Z input, it gets rid of any ground noise that might be interfering with your DI and overall it just sounds like a bit more crisper, a bit more high definition, if that makes sense. So obviously that all plays a part into getting the signal from your guitar into the interface and then getting the best quality sound from your interface into the computer before it even hits the amp sim. Just for today's video, I'm gonna be focusing on just high gain tones, uh, not crunch or clean or anything like that. I might do it in another video, but the reason for doing just the high gain stuff is that's the tone that I'm using most of the time anyway. So I figured it'd be a good idea to show you guys how I go about it. Most audio interfaces will have a little indicator to show you whether you're clipping or not. And the way that I dial in the gain um, on my input is that I kind of just dig into my strings, palm mute, kind of play as hard as I can. And when I'm clipping, I turn it down below the point just before I'm clipping so that when I'm playing to my hardest, it's not clipping. <laughs> Thank you. 
One thing you got to be aware of is that when you're playing really hard, you might get some of those like noises coming out from around the headstock after you've actually stopped playing. And it's just because you're picking the strings and the strings are reacting up here. It gets a little bit like it can actually sneak through into the amp sim. So a way to mediate that is to actually get yourself like a fret wrap. This is a groove gear fret wrap, or you can tie a sock around it or tape it off or something um, just to kind of mediate those frequencies that might stick in. So now that we've got the fret wrap on, there's not as many of those like frequencies that are slipping through into the amp sim. So even though we're just focusing on dialing high gain tones, there's obviously a bunch of different high gain tones you guys can dial in. That's why it's important to understand the tone that you want before you even start touching anything. So for example, if you wanted like a doom metal tone, you'd probably want like the bass um, turned up and the mids turned a little bit off. Uh, if you wanted a gent tone, you'd probably turn the mids a little bit up and kind of get more articulate. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to do a tone that I use most of the time and kind of the same settings that I'm dialing in on all my amp sims and stuff like that. So this is the Archetype Pliny and I'm thinking about doing a video where I compare every single new DSP guitar plugin that they've put out and kind of put them head to head and see what comes out of it. Um, so I'm just trying the Pliny out right now. Um, the settings that I want to go through before I even touch anything are obviously oversampling on higher to get the best sound quality out of it. Right now I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of effects on so I'm just going to disable that page because we're just going for a rhythm high gain tone. Um, cab looks good. Uh, equalizer in here amp head, and then a couple pedals, a compressor and an overdrive. As you can tell, that's more like a crunch tone. Let's just go through the amps while we're here. So this is the clean amp. And this is like the lead amp. Straight away, I know that that's going to be a great amp for leads, but that's not so much a good amp for rhythm in my eyes, because as you can tell, when I'm palm muting, it does get a little bit washy. Let's try mediating that, uh, flick the bright switch on, maybe turn the master down, compensate by turning the output up. That's still a bit too washy for my liking, so I reckon the amp that we're going to be using today is the crunch one. Before I touch anything in the amp head section, um, if I'm using a plugin, I'll generally go straight to the cab section and play with that first before I touch any of the amp settings. The reason being is that when you're playing with the cab settings, it actually alters the tone so much and you can get really articulate, especially if the plugin has like different mic selections and stuff like that, which this one does. So the way I dial in a cab section of any amp sim um, or plugin that I use is I generally use one microphone as kind of capturing the high frequencies and then another microphone to complement that by filling up the low end. And loading up this plugin, it seems that NeuroDSB have the same idea in mind. So a 57 to capture all the high end frequencies and then like a 160 to capture all the low end. When I turn off the 160 and it's just the dynamic 57, it gets really, really bright. And if I turn on the 160, it will kind of round out and get more even. Because it's introducing some of those low frequencies that the Ribbon 160 is picking up. I usually go for 57 type microphones in any type of amp sim or plugin that I'm using. So what I've done is I've just disabled the 160 for now and I'll kind of scoop around with the 57 until I find something that I like. For my ears right there, that's too brittle. That's like right on the speaker and it's a bit too much high end going on for my liking. So you can just dial that back a touch until you find that sweet spot that you're after. happy with the way that's sounding so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in that 160 microphone and turn off the 57 and kind of do the same thing with the 160. I might go through some of the other microphones as well just to get a sense of what they're doing. So 
So as you can tell, the 121 is way more boomy than that 160 in the same spot. I actually really like the way that that um, 121 sounded, it really filled up the low end quite nicely, so I'm going to play around with that one. Okay, so now I'm going to re-engage the 57 and blend them both together. This is what it sounds like. The reason why I like this so much is that the 121 is kind of capturing all the low end stuff, kind of making it sound a little bit bloomy and it fluctuates just a little bit, kind of makes it sound like a real cab in the way that the speaker would react with the air and then the 57 is capturing all that high-end stuff so you can still hear everything that I'm playing. So common practice when you're going for this type of like a modern metal genty tone is to use an overdrive pedal before the actual amp to boost the signal into the actual amp. So what I do is I flick the overdrive on and then general practice is you turn the drive pretty much all the way off and the level all the way up and then adjust tone to your liking. Um, tone is kind of like like a presence, I, th I think of it as like a presence knob. If you turn it all the way down, it will sound really dark. If you turn it all the way up, it will sound really bright. So playing with all these settings and kind of just mediating between your gear and the actual stuff that you're using and the models of the stuff that you're using and kind of using your ears. So now that I'm happy where the drive and level are, I'm just gonna play with the tone knob until I find a spot that I like. Just to show you the difference between having the tone knob low and the tone knob high. You can tell it's way, way brighter. Personally, I think that's a little bit too bright, but I like it having a little bit more than halfway, so I'm just gonna kind of play around there until I find a spot. I'm really liking the way it sounds there, so just a quick A-B test again before the overdrive. And with the overdrive. I don't really put compressors before the actual amp, um, reason being is that amps and overdrive pedals compress guitars enough as it is, but I generally do put a little bit compression after when I'm doing it in the mix, just so it kind of sits better in the mix. But when I'm just dialing in a guitar tone, I generally don't use a compressor unless I'm going for like clean tones so that when I tap and stuff like that, it kind of levels out. So now that we have the cab section done and the pedal and the overdrive all adjusted, now it's time to actually get into the amp and all the settings that we're gonna dial in. So two things that I'm thinking about constantly when I'm dialing in a tone is if I have enough low end and if I'm not cutting out too much because I'm so used to cutting it out when I'm mixing um, and if I'm having enough high end and presence and treble to kind of get the actual nuances of whatever I'm playing and not make it sound too dark. I genuinely like brighter tones and the first thing I'll do is I'll adjust the gain. Now everyone seems to think that because we're playing metal you should turn the gain all the way up and kind of really get those troops hot and kind of get that saturation going but honestly I don't think it sounds that good. For example... <laughs> You can probably tell that when we turn the gain down, the playing gets way more articulate. So for that sense, because I like having an articulate tone that kind of gets the nuances of everything that I'm playing, I'm not going to want to dial in the gain too much. So right now we'll start with it on halfway and we'll kind of adjust it accordingly as we're playing. A good way to set the gain knob at just the right level is to do a palm mute test. When you really choke up a palm mute, if it sounds way too stringy and there's not like blooming or anything, you probably need a little bit more gain, but if it's way too bloomy, you probably want to turn the gain just off. 
for example, this would be a little bit too boomy. Here it's still bloomy, but it's not taking up as much low end. And then when you've adjusted it to a spot that sounds good with the palm use, I generally just fine tweak it a little bit just from playing. So I'll play something and then I'll kind of adjust it to where I want it exactly. <laughs> When we're going for high gain tones, I should have mentioned this before, that the gate should be set pretty high if you want to clamp down on any of those overarching frequencies or any of those like static noises that come just after you play it when you're using a high gain amp and overdrive. So for the Pliny plugin, I found that usually I dial it around negative 50 on most plugins, but for some reason the Pliny plugin isn't as strong, um, probably because that is a Pliny plugin and he doesn't need that much um, noise reduction anyway. So having it around like here sounds good to me kind of clamps down straight away but still sounds real enough so as i was saying before this is like a trial period with the pliny i don't actually own this plugin so i'm still getting used to it as i'm making this video and um, like i was saying before with knowing the gear that you use before you even start dialing in anything um, an amp sim that I use a lot is another one by Neural DSP is the Fort and Nameless and just by nature that amp sim is much more um, focused on the high end. It's not as warm as this one. As you can tell this Plenty plugin is pretty warm. And while that may sound good for some instances if we're going for like a high gain modern metal gent tone you don't really want it to be as warm. You kind of want to have a little bit more presence, a little bit more high end. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the treble and the presence knob. See right there that might be just a little bit too much presence going on. really like the way that's sounding right now. Predator's knob just a little bit over halfway and the treble knob being pushed up quite considerably to bring out the brightness of the amp, bring out the brightness of the guitars and in turn kind of get the articulations of my playing through the speaker. <laughs> A knob that most people don't really talk about when they're dialing in amp tones with plugins and stuff like that is the master knob. Um, so if a master knob reacts the way that it should react, when you turn it all the way up, it should get a little bit more flubby, a little bit more low end comes through, gets a little bit more bloomy, kind of gets a little bit more warmer. Um, if you turn the master knob down, it will kind of get a little bit more articulate, kind of get your playing coming through, and it'll sound a little bit more focused. So obviously when you turn the master up, it will adjust the volume as well. So you're gonna be careful. Um, if I turn the master up, I'm gonna to have to turn the output down just so it stays at the same level. Even then that's a little bit more louder. But as you can tell, um, when the master knob's all the way up, sounds a little bit more warmer, sounds a little bit more pushed, has a little bit more of that low mid stuff going on. And when I adjust it to the way it was before, so I take that even further, I turn the master down and I adjust the output accordingly in the plugin so that it sounds at the same level.
see that I haven't actually touched the bass or mid knobs yet and the reason being is that the more you play with the master the more that it affects the low end and the low mids so I want to play with the master first set it at a point where I can see myself leaving it at and then adjust the bass and mids accordingly so right now I feel like this is a great little spot that we got ourselves in now that we've touched the master knob you might notice that it's not as high gain kind of getting a little bit more crunchy and that's because we're taking the bloom out of the master and out of the power amp saturation so to adjust accordingly we're going to turn the gain just a little bit up from where it was before kind of getting some of that back without getting that power amp saturation coming through Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna play with the bass and mid knob. So just to get a feel for the bass knob before I even do anything, I turn it all the way off and then all the way on, just so I can see where my two levels are at. So all the way off. Sounds a little bit more brittle. Obviously you're taking that low end out, so it kind of gets a little bit annoying. Turn it all the way up. So now that we get our two points, I'll just set it at halfway again kind of play around with the knob until I find a spot that I like. Around halfway was a really good starting point because I haven't really touched it much. I've just added a little, little bit more, um, but I'm gonna be cutting that out when post anyway. It's just kind of get like the real amp feel coming through when I'm playing it now. And now we're on to the last knob, the mids knob. Now the reason why I leave this to a last is because it's probably the most influential knob in any amp sim when you're dialing in a tone. Reason being is that if it's all the way off, it sounds really, really scooped and kind of sound like it's like a massive hole in your guitar. <laughs> And if you have it all the way up, it's really, really present, really in your face, kind of honky, and it's really hard to mediate in post. And just by turning the knob, you can see how much it reacts to the plane. Now again, starting in the middle point, I'm just going to kind of scoop around until I find it into a spot that I like with this certain end. I like the way it's sitting right there, just a little bit over halfway, just to kind of get a little bit more push out of the guitar. Um, again, that's pretty much a staple when any modern metal or gent tone is kind of pushing up the mids just a touch um, So you get a little bit more like boost coming out of your guitar if that makes sense So now that we've got everything set to a level that we like what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the pedal and the amp again and kind of make little tiny adjustments to every knob where I see fit I shouldn't be making any big moves here I should be just adjusting what I've already put in and um, kind of really really finalizing on the tone so just by playing <laughs> The palm music sounding good, it's not too bloomy, but I wouldn't mind a little bit more brightness out of it. So again, I'm gonna go back to the overdrive and play with this tone knob until I find it in a spot that I like. Thank you. 
ended up pushing it up just a little, little bit more. Again, as you can see, not too much, just a little bit more um, to what it was before, just to get a little bit more brightness out of the guitar. Okay, so now again, going through everything, the gain. Okay, it might sound a little bit too stringy now that we've adjusted the master knob, so maybe I'll have to compensate just a little bit more and touch the gain up. I really like the way the bass and mids are in this tone at the moment, so I'm not going to touch that, but what I am going to focus on is the treble and presence knobs, just to really focus in on the high end of this tone and get it at a spot that I like. So. <laughs> So yeah, I reckon that's it. I really like the way that that's sounding. Just a brief overview of everything that we've done so far. Um, we've got the cab section where we've got the 57 capturing the high end and the ribbon 121 capturing the low end. And, and then we got the overdrive here, drive all the way off, tone up considerably to bring out the brightness of the guitar and level all the way up just to kind of get that overdrive pedal coming through and really tightening up the DI before we hit the amp. And then on the amp, we got the gain at a point just before it gets a little bit too bloomy. You want just enough gain. You don't want to overdo the gain. You always want to have it just enough so that when you palm mute, turning on the volume would be a good idea. There's just enough gain, there's just enough grunt, and there's just enough bloom um, just before the point that it gets a little bit more like overwhelming and a little bit more low end coming through. Bass I've turned up just a touch, um, mids I've turned up just a little bit more than that just to kind of get that like modern metal genty type of mid focus tone. And again, because I'm so used to amp sims like the Fort and Nameless or like the JST Misha Man Sewer, stuff like that where the high gain is very prevalent, um, this Pliny one, straight away I'd notice that it was a little bit darker so I've adjusted the treble and presence knobs accordingly until I found it at a spot that I usually have it set at. And then last but not least, the master knob has been set down just a touch to kind of get some of that power amp saturation out, to kind of clean up the tone a bit, kind of get a little bit more articulate. And all in all, I think it sounds pretty, pretty good. <laughs> So hopefully you guys have seen how I dial in my tones and hopefully get in what I perceive as the perfect guitar tone every single time. As I said before, I'm always thinking about two things. I'm thinking about the low end filling it up enough and I'm thinking about the high end being articulate enough to get the stuff that I'm actually playing through the speaker and not being too warm. As you can probably tell, it's a little bit of a balancing act when you're adjusting some knobs like the master where you adjust that and then you have to tweak a couple of things after that just to get it where it was before and where you were happy with. Even though you might not be using the exact same software or the exact same hardware that I'm using, you can kind of take whatever I've done and adjust it to your own. For example, with the gain knob, like I said before, you want to have it at a level just before it starts getting too bloomy. So if you do that on your own plugins and your own gear, it should have the same effect. And then certain things that are going to be in all tones, like having one mic for the high end stuff and having another mic in the cab section for filling out the low end. And then like overdrive pedals and stuff like that, having the drive all the way off, having the level all the way up. These are the things that I pretty much put in every single tone that I make. 
Thank you guys so much for watching if you're still here. If you like the video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. And if you wanna see more of this stuff, definitely subscribe because I will be doing more mixes, more tutorials, more guitar tone, everything guitar related I'll be doing on the channel in the future. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Good luck on making your tones. Ciao.